Water resources are really important, especially in desert regions. So here we are, Brigham Young University. We're just going to zoom out a little bit and we see Utah Lake, Freshwater Lake right next to Provo. And then if we go upstream a little bit, we'll see another reservoir up here. This is the Deer Creek Reservoir where we get much of our water. Up from that, up the Provo River, we also have the Jordanelle Reservoir up by the ski resorts that provide these reservoirs with the runoff during the summer. And um, then we, you know, build things like a, uh, a reservoir dam and are able to have a more constant supply throughout the year. Okay, so we want to be able to track the levels of these reservoirs throughout the year, given some information as it flows down to the different reservoirs, down to Utah Lake, and finally to the Great Salt Lake, uh, which is by Salt Lake City. So let's uh, try to model this reservoir system. We're going to use some differential equations, a differential equation that will describe each of the reservoir levels as it flows down to the successive reservoir. Okay, and we have some differential equations and some different inputs here. We're going to say that the outflow is dependent on the square root of the height of the reservoir. So if the height is larger than higher, then we're going to have more outflow, but only by the square root. Okay, so we're not adjusting any type of uh, you know outflow valves or things like that. It's just a let's say a pipe that's coming out of the reservoir. Okay, and we have the different uh, usage requirements and the areas of the reservoir for evaporation. So we're basically just going to create a mass balance around each of these and use that as our source of a differential equation for each one to try to approximate the height of the reservoir. So there's some additional information here on solving this and you can see uh, the solutions in MATLAB and Python. Uh, you can download those. Also we're going to walk through the Gecko solution together on how to formulate this with the Gecko dynamic optimization package. So let's come over here to um, just get some of our input data and work through this one. Okay so first of all we have some outflow river rates uh, we have that those are dependent on the square roots of the height. We also have some evaporation rates. So the larger the lake, uh, and also if it's fresh water, it's going to evaluate, uh, sorry, evaporate faster than something like a saltwater lake, like the Great Salt Lake. Okay, so you have the evaporation rate uh, times this uh, is going to be a constant times the area. So if the reservoir shrinks in size, the evaporation rate will also decrease. We also have inflow rates. Now it's going to be larger during the spring when you have the runoff from the mountains and the weather warms up and the snow um, you know, melts. And then it's going to be more constant uh, throughout the rest of the year. That could actually vary more. But just for the purpose of this problem, we're just going to have 12 time periods. And uh, then the outflow from the uh, the flow in for the next reservoir is going to be the flow out from the successive one. Okay, so here's number one. There's Jordan L. There's number two. There's uh, there's the Deer Creek Reservoir. Here's number three. That's Utah Lake. And finally, the water ends up here in the Great Salt Lake. Okay, so it kind of travels downhill, and we're going to try to keep track of that. We also have some usage requirements right there. Uh, we need, um, you know, at least that amount. Um, you know, we're going to have that, actually not uh, that amount, but it's going to be used by farmers or by the cities. Uh, these are all in the volumes of kilometers cubed per year. Okay, and then we also have the area of the reservoir. We'll just assume those are constant. You can see the Great Salt Lake is much larger than these other two that are uh, smaller. Utah Lake is somewhere in between. Okay, and then we have the initial volume of the reservoir as well. These are uh, you know, relatively small but very deep. Utah Lake is shallow, so it has more surface area relative to its depth. And you can see the volume of those. Utah Lake is 
kilometers cubed versus these other smaller reservoirs up here are uh, you know they're smaller um, and ha combined hold about as much water as the one and two hold about as much water as number three okay so we want to formulate the dynamic model with the quantities such as constants parameters variables and model expressions equations such as these uh, intermediates and equations uh, sections of the model and if you looked at some of the uh, information about how to formulate these models you'll see these different sections that we're going to use to classify different quantities such as constants parameters variables and equations we also have the concept of intermediates where we're able to reduce the model complexity by defining intermediate values that are then going to be substituted into the equation section so if we have an explicit uh, non-differential equation we can often use an intermediate to reduce the complexity of our final model Okay, so here's some information about uh, you know about this. We have um, the model that we covered in those other videos. So if you want to go look at those, here are the constants, parameters, variables, intermediates, and equations. And you'll see I'm indexing some of those within the AP Monitor modeling language. We're going to do that with Gecko as well, and just show you how to do that with with Python. Okay. So I'm going to come over to my Python here, and we'll just go through um, go through this one. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this on the left-hand side, okay? And then on the right-hand side, we're just going to put our Python our model here. That's going to be our AP Monitor model, okay? And Okay, so there it is. Well, as we go through it, we'll just uh, you know kind of map what we had before uh, to the gecko model. Okay, so I'm just going to have uh, you know gecko. I'm going to import that, import NumPy, and then define some of my initial conditions. Now, in this case, I'm defining them all within Python versus in the AP Monitor modeling language, you have to define a CSV, a data file, and a model file. So the nice thing about Gecko is you can define it all within one uh, file. Okay, and then we have areas as well. These are some of our areas. We're just going to create these initial conditions. You can see the surface areas uh, right here. Okay, these are just parameters that are fixed. We could have included those as constants as well. Okay, and let's go on to the next one. Here's our initial, this is going to be our initial volume. Okay, and you can see those on the right as well. We also have our areas, uh, sorry, the heights that are going to be the volume divided by the areas uh, times 1,000. Okay, so we're just going to have that in, uh, in meters. And then we have our velocity out, which is going to be equal to c times numpy square root height not so that's going to be our initial velocity out we're just getting some initial conditions here and then here is our uh, flow value okay now you don't have an equivalent in this other model here because uh, we have to define that in a data file but within Python we have the ability to find the inflow rates this is the snow runoff that's filling the top reservoir okay the Jordan L reservoir Okay, and then we have the, uh, you know, this is going to be the V in. Okay, it, those are going to be initially equal to zero. And then we're going to initialize the model. And uh, here is the gecko model. We're going to have a time array. We're just going to have the 12 months of the year. And we'll start with zero and go to one year with 13 um, different uh, values. We'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that'll be 13 different values. Then we'll define some constants. Here's C value. This is the outflow constant. Okay, and we're going to define its value here. We could have defined it inside that value equals zero instead if we wanted to. Um, or we can you know, define all four of them and then change their initial conditions. Okay, so you see how we did that? We defined all four as constants and then uh, we then changed their initial conditions below. Okay, and then we also have the usage rates. Those are used by cities or, you know, farmers. 
And then we'll also have an array of uh, the evaporation, okay? And we'll change that for the, uh, the very last one. So the negative one there means go to the very end and change it for the salt water. Okay, it was one times 10 to the minus five uh, for the fresh water and then half of that for the salt water. Okay, now we have the areas. Okay, so a lot of this is defining arrays. Uh, part of this exercise is that we don't just have one differential equation now, or, uh, you know, we have actually like the same differential equation that describes all four of these reservoirs, but we just have different inputs and outputs to those. So a lot of this exercise is just trying to work with arrays, and this will be important, uh, especially for many problems that you run into because you'll have the same differential equations, let's say a distillation column that's going to have the same differential equations that will govern it at each tray of the distillation column. And so you want to be able to write that once and then use arrays to efficiently describe your model. Okay, here is my uh, VN, and then let's go ahead and do my variables. Okay, I'm going to have the volume, the height, and the, uh, the volumetric flow rate out. And then I have some intermediates as well. Okay, kind of like I have intermediates in my other model, I'm going to define these uh, just for these different ranges. This is going to be 1 to 4, so it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to include 1, 2, and 3, not equal, not 4 as well. Um, and then I also have V evap, okay, where we're going to be able to calculate the volumetric uh, evaporation rate of, uh, from these as well. Okay, so equations. Okay, we have some equations. This is the differential, the first differential is the change in volume of reservoir I is going to be equal to the volumetric flow rate in minus the volumetric flow rate out minus the volumetric flow out of evaporation and also the use from the lake. Okay, and we're going to do that for I in range 4, for the four different reservoirs. Okay, and then we also have, you know, how the height relates to the volume. So the height in meters and the volume in uh, kilometers cubed. And then we'll also have the outflow. Okay, so this is, the, this is gonna be the square root uh, correlation. I just squared both sides uh, to come up with uh, this alternate one to avoid the use of square root, which is not differentiable at, uh, you know, negative below zero. So, um, you know, it's sometimes better to reformulate equations as well to be able to have a cleaner, um, you know, this is going to be a, a way that allows the gradient-based solvers to be able to find a solution. So sometimes you want to rearrange your equations a little bit. This is an equivalent one, but it avoids the square root of negative numbers. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just set the I mode equal to four. So that's our simulation mode, dynamic simulation. And then we'll solve it. And then we'll have plotting some of these uh, results. Um, we'll just create a time vector here. And we're just gonna multiply by 12. So we had it in years before, but we're gonna convert that to months instead. And we'll plot the results. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go through these quickly and then we'll look at the plot. Okay, so here is the plot of our data. And let's just make this a little bit bigger as we look at it. So you can see that uh, you know we're using or evaporating um, you know, the 0.13 meters cubed per uh, year rate is not sufficient uh, to fill up the reservoir, but then you have the spring runoff, the point Two, one, and then you start to fill the Jordanelle Reservoir. Well, that makes a larger outflow from the Jordanelle Reservoir as the height increases, and then the rate at which this is transferred to the Deer Creek increases as well, and the level is going to increase. And then throughout the year, it's going to slowly decrease, and then next spring, it's going to then increase again. You can see the supply flow right here. And these are included on the same subplot, but if you want to see more of a change, okay, in these, maybe put those on a separate subplot to be able to see them. Okay, and then we also have some of the other variables of interest. 
Okay, so that's it for this uh, simulation using Gecko. You can find uh, additional information on Gecko um, online on Read the Docs. Let's just see if I can find that. Read the Docs. And if you look at Gecko, Okay, and okay, so here's the overview of the documentation for Gecko. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Uh, the solution uh, for this, again, is also available at uh, the web page that we mentioned. Um, and you can get the source code and uh, use that to help you with uh, this solution.